Hello again everybody, I hope you enjoyed walks one and two. Now I'm going to start talking about walk three, which is in a different area, but not too far from where I live. This time we're going to be walking in Sutton Manor Woodland and Clockface Colliery Park. They're both actually old coal mines. One is the old Sutton Manor Colliery and the other one is the old Clockface Colliery. Sutton Manor Woodland now contains the dream. So part of our walk will be taking us past the dream and then over into Clockface Colliery Park and then back to the start point. The walk will start from the car park in King George V playing field which is on Jubits Lane, the B5419. There's two bus stops adjacent where you can get the 17, the 30 and the 32 and I'll be showing you how to get the and I will be showing you where the bus stops are. You can also walk down from Lee Green Station, which is just over a mile away. If you recall from the introductory film I made, I will be also talking about the industrial heritage of the Northwest uh, when and where necessary. And this particular walk is an ideal example of that. I'll be showing you old maps and old photographs and describing where the colliery used to be and how it's changed to this day. If you read the description below, there'll be a list of the people who have helped me contribute towards this film. I do hope you enjoy the walk. Don't forget to push the subscribe button. The walk starts from this car park here, or you can get off the bus here from St Helens, or here from Witness. So we come out of the car park or off the bus stop and we walk down Jubert's Lane till we come to the main gates opposite Forest Road where we enter into the main gates and it's around about here that I'm talking about what the plant used to look like back in, in the 1990s. We then walk along this path here which takes you past the old pit heads and then along this path here where we start to ascend up until you get to the dream. When you've had a look at the dream, you then go back down the hill along this path here. You've got a little pond here that's not shown up on the map, so you turn right at the pond, walk along this path here, cross Clockface Road. There is a pedestrian crossing there. And this is where we enter Clockface Colliery Park now. So we go all around the perimeter of it. Back the way we came. And then just for a bit of variety, we'll go down the side here. And then start to climb back up to the dream here. And down again there, along these paths, and taking you back to the start point. Good morning everybody, we're now in the King George V playing grounds, on the edge of Jubit's Lane, Sutton Manor, St Helens Merseyside. This is the start point for Walk 3 over the Dream, and you can see over the road there is one of the bus stops that you can use, which is where you can get the number 17, the 30 or the 32. The 30 and the 32 are St Helens circular buses, but the 17 you can get from Widnes to St Helens. You can also come here by train, by coming down from Lee Green Station in Jubits Lane. It's about just over a mile, and believe it or not, you can get a train from Newcastle all the way to Lee Green Station. This is walk three, and today we are going to walk in Sutton Manor Woodland, which is ahead of us there, the other side of the road. But we're going to walk down Jubits Lane to go to the original main gates of Sutton Manor Colliery, where I'm going to talk to you a bit about what Sutton Manor was like in the past and what it's like today. And as we turn right out of the car park and go down Jubits Lane, we go back in time, back to 1990. This is what Sutton Manor Colliery used to look like when it was working, just before it closed in 1991. 
This is the scene taken from the top of number one winding tower. This is Forest Road here and Dubert's Lane along there. And there's where the main gates are that you come into nowadays. And as you come through the main gates on your right, this area here is the canteen. And this area here is the pit head baths. This is the office block. This is the lamp room. And over on the right here is the engineer's workshop. This is what the entrance to Sutton Manor Colliery looks like today. And we're now going to cross the road and go into the park and I'll talk you through what used to be there and what's there now. We're just coming into the park now where I'll just describe it as we're walking through. It was coming this way, just to our right here, is the old canteen. And just to our left, here, was where the changing rooms were, the, the clean and dirty side. And then if we walk up this path here now, ahead of us where you see that triangle of grass, used to be the office block and just beyond where the office block was where you can see that grey wiggly thing in the distance and the trees that was the lamp room and the boiler house and over to our right where that path goes through the trees were the two winding towers and we'll walk through there in a minute so we're just coming through to where the winding towers used to be the shafts are still there. There was two winding towers. Number one, which is the nearest one we're approaching now. <clears throat> and number two. Of course, number two is steam wound up until the pit closed. The pit opened in 1901 and the shafts were dug deeper and deeper until eventually they went down 770 metres. Here's what remains of number two shaft, still sat on the concrete plinth. You can imagine, right above us was a tall tower with the winding gear on, with lifts taking men up and down, and tubs of coal to be treated at the rear of the winding gear, where the coal was separated from the gravel and mud and stuff that came up with it. And that gravel and mud ended up forming the tip or the rook which we're going to climb shortly and on top of that is the dream. The pit opened in 1901 and was suddenly closed in May 1991 and it was said that there are still 40 years worth of coal under the ground. There's quite a few paths climbing up to the top of Sutton Manor woodland and this is the one we're going to take today. It's gentle at first but gets a bit steeper towards the top. It can probably just be about manageable with a wheelchair. As you can see it's a multi-use footpaths here so you can cycle on them, horse ride on them or walk on them. So we're going to wander our way to the top now. So now we're starting to come up to the steepest part of the ascent, up to the top of the dream. And this is where you might struggle if you're pushing a wheelchair. Now just as we come round to the, this part here, we're going to have a look at Fiddler's Ferry Power Station in the distance, which is now closed down. I was talking to a miner on here, and just to give you a sort of idea of how far the coal goes underground. The shaft from this pit here went all the way to the perimeter fence of Fiddler's Ferry Power Station and that's two and a half miles from here. When they went down to the bottom of the pit from the winding gear there was then a train that used to take them to the coal face and if they missed the train, if they were late for work, they had to walk the two and a half miles to get to work on the ground. Sometimes they used to ride the belts that the coal came on. It was highly illegal and very, very dangerous. 
but it saved the two and a half mile walk, even though you might have lost your head at any point. Okay, so we're coming to the top of the hill now, and you've got a choice of paths. But the one on the left here takes you onto the very top where the dream is. And as we round the corner, you'll see the dream ahead of you, unless someone's pinched it overnight. built in 2009 it stands 20 meters high and it was designed by a guy called Jamie Plenser there is a link to a YouTube film by Jamie Plenser showing you a bit about the construction of the dream at the end of this video it cost 1.8 million pounds and it's funded by the big arts project the Arts Council for England the art fund and Channel 4 but the local miners also had a hand in its design. We're going to head off down this path now, which is downhill all the way to Clockface Colliery Park. Now we're coming up to a junction here. Now we're going to continue on to the right towards Clockface Colliery Park. But if you only wanted to come and see the dream, then you can turn left here and it'll take you back to the car park. So we're coming down to the bottom of the hill now. And when we get to the bottom there, we're going to turn left. You can turn to the right and go around the perimeter of Sutton Manor Woodland. So when we get to this pond, we turn right and right again, which takes us down the old railway line that led to the old Clockface Colliery. So we're coming up now to the road crossing at Clockface Road. There's a set of pedestrian lights here. I advise you use them because it's quite a fast road, this. So we're going to go straight across into Clockface Colliery Park. We're just coming up to the entrance now to Clockface Colliery Park, car park. You can actually park your car here if you wished and do the walk from this car park. It's off Gorsey Lane the car park and it's the site of the old pit head. This is the old entrance to Clockface Colliery where them new houses are over there it used to be the office block and as we pan round this is where the pit heads were so we're now going to enter the park Tell you how you're going to it, now in Clockface Colliery Park and you've got three options here you can take that path over there, the far side of the lake, or you can take the middle path up there, or we can go around to the left and take the left-hand path. So what we're doing today is we're going to take the left-hand path. <clears throat> so we're coming up to the end of the park now. That path straight on takes you to Gorsey Lane, but we're going to be turning around to the right and as you can see, there's information boards all over the park telling you about Clockface Colliery. So now we come to the parting of the ways. 
you can go straight on here or you can turn right at the next path. I prefer the right hand path because it's quieter, you don't hear the noise from the motorway as much. So the way back's exactly the opposite of the way we came. Enjoy your walk everybody. Well I hope you enjoyed walk three. Now there's some acknowledgements before the end and I'm just going to read off my script here. I have some acknowledgements to make before the end of the film, especially to Stephen Wainwright for allowing me to use the data from his Sutton Beauty and Heritage website, including the, some of the pictures, and especially to Clive Henley for permission to use the picture of Sutton Manor Colliery as it was in the old days. But I look forward to joining you again for Walk 4, which starts from the same place, the King George V playing fields in Jubit's Lane, but this time passes over the Sutton woodland and heads out into the country towards Bald Heath. This walk is just over five miles.